He is risen. Easter Sunday, a day we come together to celebrate the fact that Jesus rose and to celebrate that we have new life in Christ. It's one of the reasons we have Easter eggs, and I love Easter eggs. Nothing I enjoy more than getting up on Easter morning, sharing some chocolate with the family, opening up the eggs. And when I look at it, I see new life. And I'm reminded that it's the new life in Christ that we celebrate on Easter Sunday. And when we think about the new life that Christ gives us, it is different from anything else we can experience in the world. What we are used to in the world, what we are used to naturally, is perhaps sometimes we get sick and then we get better. Sometimes we get so sick that it looks like that we are going to die and then we get resuscitated. And that's good, that's wonderful. We praise God for those things. But what Jesus gives us is spectacular, heavenly new life. We don't just get better and we don't just get resuscitated we get as a gift from him new life brand new life and when we think about the difference between brand new life or being resuscitated we think about the awe the wonder that comes with new life we think about the possibilities and the optimism and the courage that comes with new life you see if we are just resuscitated, we go back to a previous life with all the problems and everything else that are trailing us. But if we have new life, we have a brand new canvas. If we have new life, we have a brand new situation into which we can live our lives. And that's the message of Easter. The message that Jesus died for us, not so that we could return to a life that is headed for death, but that we can enjoy a brand new life. And some of the characteristics of this brand new life are something we all need, that we all hunger for. You think about Jesus' resurrection body. And when he came and spoke to the disciples, he showed them his scars. He showed them where the spear went in and he showed them the nail holes. And he showed them where he'd been whipped. So that they could recognize who he was through his experiences. But Jesus' resurrection body had no pain. So the scars that he bore didn't translate into an ongoing effect in his resurrection body, in his new life. And even though the disciples could recognize Jesus, they could see that this was the Christ, this was the one who was crucified and died, his resurrection body was completely changed. Jesus was able to do things that a normal body could not we remember when the disciples were in the upper room and they were all locked up and Jesus just appeared. You see, this is the type of life that God wants us to receive when we are with him. God recognizes that while we're in this world, we're going to encounter things that are going to scar us. We can't live in this life without being hurt, without being pummeled a bit, without going through a few experiences that are going to give us skin knees, that are going to leave some marks on us. And some of those marks are deep, some of those marks are shallow. You know what I'm talking about, those things that sometimes we just can't get out the back of our mind. And Jesus says, I know that you have these scars, when you have new life in me, those things will not hurt you anymore. Those things will not be affecting how you approach tomorrow. Those things won't be disabling you so that you can't embrace the life that I have for you. The optimism and the wonder and the awe that comes with new life is a gift to us afresh. 
because we are the people of God and because we put our faith in Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross and how he defeated, he blew death apart. And he gives to us as a gift, and we need to remember this, he gives to us as a gift, new life. It's extraordinary. And you see, we don't have to learn how to receive the love of Christ that gives us new life. It just comes to us as a gift. We experience it simply by being close to him. When I think about new life, I think of small children, and I think of babies and toddlers in particular. And for those of you who are familiar with toddlers, they see the world with a sense of awe and excitement. And nobody has to tell a toddler that they are loved and secure. They experience it. No one has to tell a toddler or a baby, hey, this is how you experience love. They just are, and they are open to receive the love that comes from their caregivers. And there's a lot that we can learn from that when we think about the love of Christ, because sometimes the things that we've endured in our life stop us from just being with Christ and experiencing that love. Can we throw off, if you like, those barriers that will get in the way? We talked about that on Good Friday, remember? The things that can make us, that sway us from receiving the love of God. We talked how the crowd can sway us. That we can sometimes not believe in the power of God or sometimes we can become so beat up and cynical that we start to mock the very words of Christ. But when we accept with a trusting and open heart and we're prepared to hang out with Jesus, be in his word, pray with him, be around his people so we can experience his touch, then just like a toddler experiences the love of their parents, we too can experience the love of Christ. And it's transformational. Suddenly we have a new life. Suddenly our life is full of awe and wonder. And tell me you don't want that feeling again. Which one of us doesn't want to wake up every morning and say, I can't wait to see what God is doing today. I'm full of awe and wonder. Look, when's the last time that's happened to you? Where your breath has been taken away by something in your life. You see, this is how God wants us to live where we see him at work and it takes our breath away. Many years ago, uh, Connie and I went for a holiday. We went up to the Bungle Bungles in uh, the Kimberley region and it was a fantastic holiday. One of the things that we remember so vividly was when we travelled through the Bungle Bungles was the natural beauty. And as the sun moved over uh, the sky during the day. They changed colours. And we stopped at this beautiful waterhole and there were these magnificent formations that were reflecting, we believe, the glory of God. And right in the middle, there was this refreshing pool of water. And it took our breath away because we, we didn't miss the fact that this was, if you like, a symbol of God. We saw the awe, we saw the power, we saw the changing colors being the dynamic action of God in our life. And amidst all that harshness, there was this pool of refreshing water. It really took our breath away. And we spoke to each other afterwards and said, isn't that what it's like being in the presence of God, where we live our life each day and we come up and the, the formations might be the same, but the color changes. As God is at work, like the sun going across the, the sky, he gives us a different view. He gives us a different way of seeing things. And each one of them is beautiful in their own way. And we're not afraid of the different color. Yeah, yesterday it was purple. Today it's brown. The next way it's a, bit, it's a, it's a yellowy color. 
We look forward to what God is going to do. And we embrace that. And we know that we can dip into his pool of refreshment. We can dip in to those waters that the Bible say flow straight from the heavenly places. This is what Christ offers to us as his people. He offers us a new life. Not a resuscitated life, but when we rest in the love of God, we have a new life, an awe-inspiring life, a life that's full of wonder. And it's a life that's courageous and confident. If you look at those disciples, my goodness, they were a courageous bunch after they had new life. The things that would have affected them quite badly before, water off a duck's back. They were living in the love of Christ. They had a resurrection life. Peter suddenly speaking to thousands of people. The disciples walking in places that they would have been afraid to go before. Telling people about the wonders of Jesus doing miracles they were changed and they were confident they were courageous and once again that's because they had a new life and yet how often are we even though we are disciples of Christ happy to just be resuscitated so that we can go back to our old life we don't want to do that we want a new life we want to be refreshed continuously and we can do that by resting in Christ. Remember that image of a toddler just resting in the love of a parent. We can do that. My uh, little grandson is nine months old. And I look at him each day. And when I see him crawling around and when I see how confident he is, Again, my thoughts turn to a new life. Here is a brand new life that is confident and who is courageous. And he will do some silly things sometimes. He will just jump and expect someone to catch him. But the funny thing is he jumps and somebody does catch him. He'll go and explore stuff and he will know that somebody is watching him, protecting him. He's not afraid to explore whatever's in front because he knows dangers will be pushed to the left or pushed to the right and that he will be able to explore in safety. You see, that's a new life. That's a life that isn't burdened by hurt. It isn't burdened by experiences that have taken away that courage and confidence. And when we rest in Christ, we have new life so that we can jump into the future. And we know that God is there willing to catch us. We can explore. We can grab this and we can grab that. And we know that the Bible says that God goes ahead of us and surrounds us on either side. He's not going to let us pick up a razor blade. He's not going to let us pick up something that is going to hurt us. He wants us to embrace life with a confidence, with a courage. And so this is his gift to us as his people. He doesn't want us to live timid lives. He doesn't want us to live a life that's less than everything that he's promised. And this is what's so exciting about Resurrection Sunday. Whatever circumstances we find ourselves living in and of course you know these days the circumstances are a bit different I'm not going to go into it I've heard enough of it all the time but it doesn't matter where we are what our circumstances are we still have the opportunity to experience new life as opposed to a life that's patched up we have a brand new refreshed life not a life that's been resuscitated so as we meditate today and we share our easter eggs and as we declare to each other that he is risen
and we think about his resurrection body and we know the promise that comes to each one of us that Jesus is indeed the first fruit, if you like. That we too, as believers, will have our own resurrection body. But even now, we have new life. Even now, we have in this life courage, confidence. Even now, we can move ahead seeing God at work being inspired and one of the things that has been fascinating for me over the last month as the world has changed fairly rapidly I can see the hand of God all around me and it's funny oftentimes it's in uh, times of significant change where familiar things are removed that we can see God at work we're not blinded by our routines and I think that this is a, a real blessing for us as the people of God. Let's keep our eyes open. Let's live resurrection lives. Not re lives that have just been resuscitated to get back to what we were doing. Let us go forward and say, wow, I'm excited about what you're doing, Lord. Wow, I can't wait to join what you're doing here with your people in your kingdom. I just love being in your presence, Lord. I love to lay there, to hear your word, to pray to you, to hear your word back. We have that opportunity, just like a newborn, resting in the arms of a parent, receiving that love. We too can do that. So today, we declare to one another, he is risen. And in that statement, we declare that we too have new life. Why don't we pray? Lord, we thank you that we have new life because of your resurrection. And we thank you today, Lord, that we can celebrate, we can worship. We come together in your name and we think about the awe and wonder that is in our life that you release into our life. And we thank you, Lord that we can have confidence and we can have courage because you surround us, you go ahead of us, that we can live a resurrection life, a new life, because of the love that you give to us. In your precious name we pray. Amen.